On this episode of Hack 5, we're going to explore the age-old advice that you should never open a suspicious document that you receive via email. So is it true? Is your precious computer just one Word document away from being completely destroyed? Well, today, we'll find out. Many people instantly know the boring white void of an Excel file. Now, many of us have to work with these files every day because they contain important information like invoices. Now, some kids grew up and got sweet jobs like being a coal miner that prevent you from needing to interact with an Excel file at all. But unfortunately, many adults went on to be people like accountants or secretaries, and they have to work with office documents every day. Now, this makes them and office documents in general a huge target for hackers. Microsoft Office programs have many advanced features that non-power users, some might call casuals, may not know about. One of those, and the most interesting, is macros. Now, macros allow users to automate certain boring tasks, kind of similar to the way that Minecraft users use AFK programs to automate the farming of resources. Now, hackers have figured out how to do basically the same thing, and this allows them to embed traps into many types of Office documents. Now, because this allows basically any backdoor to be embedded, this can allow a hacker to do some espionage or even worse, a full ransomware attack. The craziest thing about this is it can all be done via an Excel or other Office file. You don't need any virus, it's simply the macros doing their thing. You might also think, hey, I have antivirus enabled, isn't it going to catch this? Well, no. This is what hackers call living off the land. We're simply abusing perfectly legitimate features of Office macros in order to do our bidding. Now, there are a couple of built-in protections against an uh, unexperienced hacker being able to get in there and just do this without any opposition. However, it is very easy for an experienced hacker to be able to go around those protections and wreak absolute havoc on your computer. So, exactly how would we go about building a macro document to destroy a computer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. When a hacker wants to start writing a macro, all they need to do is open up this page in the program and start typing commands. Now, this simple scripting language allows them to accomplish a number of useful functions. One thing you can do right off the bat is just pop up a message anytime the victim opens Excel, but that's not very threatening. It's more of like a prank you would do on a coworker. Instead, some real problems can start when the hacker starts running applications aside from Excel. For example, if an ethical hacker wanted to prove to you that they could run any application on your system, they would probably pop calc or repeatedly open the calculator application to let you know that they had that privilege. Now, a malicious hacker who didn't want to be caught probably wouldn't do something so cute, and instead, it would be very difficult to know if they've opened up an application like PowerShell and done something malicious to your system. Things can go very bad for the victim if the hacker manages to establish a backdoor. This can allow them to steal passwords, look through files, and even execute a full ransomware attack locking down all of your files and forcing you to pay in order to get them back. Now, in order to do this, the hacker just needs to create a macro that generates a backdoor, allowing them to make a clandestine connection to another computer, log in, and do whatever they want, often disguised as another program like Outlook. Now, Outlook is an excellent choice because it bypasses some of the protections against this sort of attack because Outlook frequently has to open attachments, and that necessitates the ability for it to launch new programs. Very sneaky. Once the hacker finishes writing the macro, they'll embed it in a convincing looking document and then attach it to a phishing email to send to the victim. This should look as convincing as possible and be designed specifically for the victim in mind, taking into account their job role and what kind of documents they might be expected to deal with on a daily basis. Once the victim opens this, then they will actually be warned that they probably shouldn't run that macro. But the way that Microsoft does this is pretty hilarious. It's a pale little yellow warning as opposed to the big red flashing warning they probably should use. 
Now, if that poor office worker chooses to enable the macro, which let's be honest, they probably will if it's something like an invoice or something that looks important, then the next thing they could be seeing on their screen is a big demand for Dogecoin to be sent to some random cryptocurrency wallet because all of their files are encrypted. While this attack will destroy your data, there's even more we can do to a victim who enables the wrong office macro. In fact, we can even expand the attack to go after anybody who trusts the victim enough to open an email and a document from them. And this would allow the attacker to go after many potential victims instead of just one. To explain how this works, we asked my coworker Killian at Veronis to show us how this attack works step by step. Today, I'm gonna use or misuse some built-in functions in Excel to do some tasks that were not really designed as part of the program. In this section of code, my operation is going to start when you open the Excel workbook. In this next section, it's going to set up a regular HTTP or web browsing connection to allow the attacker remotely to talk to your machine. In this last part, it allows attackers to live off the land or use programs built into your system in ways that they were not intended to. And in this case, it allows us to operate functions that bypass traditional security controls. So let's take a look at this in action. When the victim opens the booby-trapped Excel document and enables macros, it contacts the attacker over the internet, allowing them to run whatever commands they want, such as who am I to find out who's logged into the machine. They can even take this a step further by executing other programs or applications, such as calculator or anything else crazy or malicious that they want to. Anything is possible. Well, okay, unless you're being targeted by the Russian GRU, your computer probably won't explode. But anyway, thank you, Killian, for showing us how Windows can be completely destroyed using only an Office document with an embedded macro. So now that you're scared, how can you actually protect yourself against this kind of attack? Well, for one, you probably shouldn't be going and opening any document that has a macro embedded unless you wrote it yourself. It's just a bad idea, it's not worth the risk, and unless you wanna go in and see exactly what that macro is, you probably shouldn't do it. Now, if you absolutely have to do it, then the best way to do it is to open it in a virtual machine where the consequences are limited. And if it is a piece of ransomware and it establishes a backdoor and forces you to give up your precious Dogecoin, you're not going to have to do it because all the files are just virtual and you have a backup on your real computer. There are plenty of great virtualization software options out there for you to open these documents in a isolated and safe environment where there's no chance of a malicious office document doing any damage. And if you're absolutely crazy and paranoid, you can also download Cubes OS, which will open every application in its own isolated and secure environment. All this goes to show that you could be one enabled macro away from disaster. Now that you know how easy it is for hackers to craft one of these malicious documents to attack you, it's up to you to avoid opening any of them and becoming a victim.
you idiot. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.